A green ghost from the stars racing towards our planet. It's not a rumor, a real interstellar comet. The Three Eye Atlas is about to make its closest pass yet. An Egyptian photographer pointed his telescope at Three Eye Atlas from the Black Desert. What he captured shows the comet entering a critical phase. It's brightening, fast. What started as a faint trace is now bright enough for amateur astronomers to see with small telescopes, bright enough to photograph clearly, bright enough to measure. Here's the problem. It shouldn't be doing this. Comets fade after they pass the sun. They get dimmer as they move away. 3i Atlas passed its closest point to the sun on October the 29th. It should be fading by now. Instead, it's getting brighter, and astronomers don't know why. It's brightening, and it shouldn't be. Here's how comets normally work. They spend most of their time far from the sun, out where it's freezing cold. The ice and rock are locked together, solid, frozen. Nothing's happening. Then they swing close to the sun. The heat hits them. The ice starts sublimating, turning directly from solid to gas without melting first. That gas carries dust with it, creates the coma, creates the tail, makes the comet bright. The closer they get to the sun, the brighter they become. Peak brightness happens around perihelion. That's the closest point in the orbit. Maximum heat, maximum sublimation, maximum brightness. Then they start moving away. The sun's heat decreases. The sublimation slows down. The brightness drops. Week by week, the comet gets dimmer. Eventually, it fades back to invisibility, just a cold chunk of rock and ice drifting away. This pattern is predictable. We can model it. Astronomers plug in the comet's orbit, its size, its composition. The computer spits out a brightness curve, how bright it'll be on any given day. And usually the model matches reality pretty well. 3i Atlas isn't following the model. It reached perihelion on October the 29th. That was almost seven weeks ago. It's been moving away from the sun this whole time, getting farther from the heat source. According to every standard model, it should be dimming. It's not. Multiple observers are reporting increasing brightness. Not just stable brightness. Not a plateau. Actual increase. The comet is getting brighter as it moves away from the sun. That's backwards. Osama Fathi's image from Egypt's Black Desert shows a comet with a concentrated, stable glow. The coma is well-defined. The brightness is consistent across the structure. This isn't a faint object, struggling to be seen. This is an active object with ongoing gas production. The article about his observation says the brightness doesn't conform to expectations for natural cometary material. That's science speak for, we don't understand what's happening. Let's put this in context with other famous comets. Comet Hale-Bopp in 1997 was one of the brightest comets in decades. Millions of people saw it with their naked eyes. It hung in the sky for months, and it followed the standard brightness curve almost perfectly, bright before perihelion, peak at perihelion, fade after perihelion, exactly as predicted. Astronomers nailed the forecast. The models worked. Comet Ison in 2013 was hyped as the comet of the century. It was diving incredibly close to the sun. The brightness models predicted an amazing show. People were excited. Telescopes were ready. But Ison broke apart right at perihelion. The sun's heat and tidal forces ripped it apart. It didn't survive. The brightness dropped to nothing. The comet died. The models were wrong, but in a way that made sense. When you break a comet into pieces, it stops being bright. Comet Neowise in 2020 gave us another example. It brightened before perihelion, peaked on July 3rd, then slowly faded over the next few weeks. By August, it was too dim for casual observers. By September, it needed a telescope. The brightness curve was textbook. Nothing surprising, nothing unusual. Comet Borisov, the second interstellar object we found, also followed normal patterns. It brightened as it approached the sun. It peaked near perihelion at about magnitude 15. Then it faded as it left. Its brightness curve matched solar system comets almost exactly. If you didn't know where it came from, you'd think it was a normal comet. Nothing mysterious about it. Even Oumuamua, the first interstellar object, didn't show unexpected brightening. It stayed dim the whole time. No coma, no tail, 
just a tumbling rock reflecting sunlight. It faded as it moved away from the sun. Standard physics. No surprises. 3i Atlas is different. It's not just that the brightness is higher than expected. It's that the trend is wrong. The curve is going the wrong direction. It's doing something comets aren't supposed to do. And it's been doing this for weeks. When one observer reports something unusual, it could be a measurement error, bad weather, equipment problems, human mistake. But when multiple independent observers see the same thing, it's real. Astronomers in different countries with different equipment are all reporting the same trend. The comet is brightening. So what's causing it? Three theories for the brightening. There are three main explanations. None of them are simple. Theory one, major outgassing event. Maybe something just happened to the comet, a big event not the slow, steady sublimation we see with normal comets. Something dramatic. Think of it like this. Most comet activity is like a pot of water simmering on the stove. Gentle, steady, predictable. You can see the steam rising. You can measure the rate. You can predict how long it'll take to boil away. But occasionally, a comet has a moment more like a pressure cooker exploding. Sudden, violent. A lot of material released all at once. This is called an outburst. It happens when pressure builds up under the surface. Gas gets trapped under a layer of dust or rock. The surface acts like a lid. The pressure increases as the comet heats up. Eventually, something gives. The crust cracks. All that trapped gas bursts out, and the comet suddenly gets much brighter. We've seen this before. Comet 17P, Holmes, in 2007, had one of the most dramatic outbursts ever recorded. It increased in brightness by a factor of nearly a million, went from magnitude 17 to magnitude 2.8 in just 42 hours, suddenly visible to the naked eye. People who'd never heard of the comet were asking what that new fuzzy star was. That outburst lasted for weeks. The coma expanded to become larger than the sun in apparent size. It was extraordinary, and it showed how much potential energy can be locked inside these objects. Outbursts can increase a comet's brightness by factors of 10, 100, or more, and they can last for days or weeks. If 3i Atlas had an outburst sometime after perihelion, that could explain the brightening we're seeing now. But here's the problem. Outbursts usually happen near perihelion, when the comet is closest to the sun and heating is most intense. That's when pressure builds up fastest. That's when the crust is most likely to fail. 3i Atlas is moving away from the sun. It's cooling down. This isn't the typical time for an outburst. Also, outbursts are usually temporary. The brightness spikes up dramatically, then drops back down over days or weeks. What we're seeing with 3i Atlas is more sustained. The brightness is increasing gradually over an extended period that doesn't quite fit the classic outburst pattern, unless multiple outbursts are happening one after another, like popcorn in a microwave. Pop, pop, pop. Each one adding more brightness, each one releasing trapped gas. That's possible, but unusual. Most comets have one big outburst and then return to normal activity. Theory two, internal heat source. This connects to the planet fragment hypothesis we talked about in previous videos. Normal comets are heated from the outside. The sun's energy hits the surface, the surface heats up, ice sublimates, gas escapes. As the comet moves away from the sun, less energy hits it, less heating, less sublimation, brightness drops. But what if 3i Atlas has an internal heat source? What if it's not just relying on the sun? If this is a fragment of a destroyed planet, it might contain radioactive elements. Those elements decay and generate heat, not a lot of heat, not enough to melt the whole object, but enough to drive activity from the inside. With internal heating, the brightness wouldn't follow the normal pattern. It wouldn't peak at perihelion and then fade. It could stay active. It could even increase if the internal processes are ramping up for some reason. Maybe cracks are forming as the object cools and contracts. Those cracks expose fresh material to the internal heat. New vents open up. Gas production increases. Brightness increases. Or maybe the rotation is changing. If the object is tumbling chaotically, different parts face the sun at different times. Maybe a section with active internal vents is now rotating into better alignment. 
More of the gas escapes into space where we can see it. Apparent brightness increases. This would explain why 3i Atlas keeps surprising us. The anti-tail that points toward the sun for months. The blade-like structures in recent images. The unusual chemistry with high methanol production. And now, the unexpected brightening. All of these could fit if there's something actively happening inside this object. But it's speculation. We can't see inside it. We can only observe what's happening on the surface and in the coma. Theory 3. Rotational changes. This is the simplest explanation. And sometimes simple is right. We know 3i Atlas is rotating. Previous observations measured a rotation period of about 16 hours. It's an elongated object tumbling end over end. Comet activity isn't uniform across the surface. Some areas are more active than others. Vents, cracks, regions where ice is closer to the surface. These spots release more gas than other areas. As the comet rotates, these active regions move in and out of sunlight. When an active region faces the sun, you get a jet, bright outgassing. When that region rotates into shadow, the activity decreases. Now imagine the rotation axis is shifting slightly. This happens sometimes. Jets produce thrust. That thrust can create torque. Torque changes rotation. The orientation changes over time. If the rotation is changing in a way that exposes more active regions to sunlight, the overall brightness increases. Not because there's more total activity, but because more of the activity is visible from Earth. More of the jets are pointing in directions where we can see them. This is the most conservative explanation. It doesn't require internal heat sources or major outbursts, just a normal comet with an unusual rotation pattern. But it still leaves questions. Why would the rotation change in this specific way? Why now and not earlier? And does it explain all the other weird things we've seen? Each theory has problems. Each theory fits some observations, but not all of them. And we're running out of time to figure out which one is right. December 19. And your chance to observe. On December 19th, 3i Atlas makes its closest approach to Earth. It'll be 269 million kilometers away. That's still very far. About 1.8 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. But it's the closest it'll ever be. And then it's gone. Forever. This is not coming back. The orbit is hyperbolic, with an eccentricity over 6. It's moving way faster than solar escape velocity. One pass through the inner solar system, and it's out. Back to interstellar space. Back to wandering the galaxy for another few billion years. We have one shot to study this thing. And that shot is happening right now. Professional observatories are watching. Hubble has time scheduled. Webb is observing. Ground-based telescopes around the world are tracking it. They're collecting spectroscopy, measuring the chemical composition of the jets looking for changes over time, checking for volcanic gases that would support the internal heat theory. They're doing thermal imaging, infrared telescopes that see heat instead of visible light. If there's an internal heat source, the thermal signature won't match the sunlight pattern. There will be warm spots that don't correlate with solar heating. They're taking high-resolution images, trying to see the nucleus directly, trying to map surface features, trying to identify where the jets are coming from. They're measuring the rotation precisely, tracking how it's spinning. If jets are producing thrust, that affects the rotation. By measuring the rotation, they can calculate how much force the jets are generating. All of this needs to happen now. Because after December 19th, the comet starts getting farther away again. The signal gets weaker. The images get fuzzier. The spectroscopy gets noisier. By mid-2026, it'll be too faint for most telescopes to observe. But you can observe it too. Not with the same detail as professional telescopes, but you can see it. You can participate. You can look at an interstellar visitor with your own eyes. Here's what you need. You need a small telescope, not a big expensive one. A basic amateur telescope with a 6-inch aperture will work. Or even good binoculars mounted on a tripod. Something that gathers more light than your eye alone. If you have 10 by 50 binoculars, that's 10 times magnification and 50 millimeters of aperture. That's enough. Just make sure they're steady. Handheld binoculars shake too much. You need a tripod or some way to stabilize them. You need a dark sky. This is critical. Get away from city lights. The darker, the better. Egypt's black desert is ideal. 
because there's almost no light pollution. The sky is truly black, stars are everywhere, but any rural area works. National parks, state parks, countryside, anywhere you can see the Milky Way clearly. If you can see thousands of stars, you're in a good spot. You need to know where to look. Right now, 3i Atlas is in the constellation Perseus. That's in the northern sky if you're in the northern hemisphere. Early morning is best. A few hours before sunrise when Perseus is high in the sky. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it's low on the northern horizon. Harder to see, but not impossible. There are apps and websites that show exactly where to point. Stellarium is free and works on computers and phones. Sky Safari is great for mobile devices. The Sky Live has a website that shows current positions. Plug in your location and the date. They'll show you the comet's position relative to stars you can recognize. You can plan your observation before you even go outside. Here's a pro tip. Let your eyes adjust to darkness. It takes at least 20 minutes for your eyes to become fully dark adapted. Don't look at your phone without using a red light mode. White light ruins your night vision instantly. If you need to check the app, turn the screen brightness way down or use a red flashlight. Astronomers use red lights because they don't mess up your dark adaptation. What will you see? Not a spectacular show, not a bright comet with a long tail stretching across the sky. This isn't Hale Bob. You'll see a fuzzy patch of light, a small glow against the stars, maybe a hint of a tail if your optics are good and you use something called averted vision. That's where you look slightly to the side of what you want to see. The edge of your retina is more sensitive to faint light. It sounds weird, but it works. The comet will look like a small, out-of-focus star, or like a cotton ball. It won't have sharp edges. It won't have color. Through a small telescope, it's just gray or pale green. The coma will be visible as a diffuse glow around a slightly brighter center. If you take a photo, use a few seconds of exposure. The comet will show up better on camera than to your eye. Even a smartphone can capture it if you have an app that does long exposures. Mount the phone on a tripod. Use a 3 to 5 second exposure. You'll see the stars as points of light and the comet as a small fuzzy smudge. But that fuzzy patch is an object from another star system. It's been traveling for billions of years. It formed around a different sun in a different part of the galaxy. It survived the destruction of its home system. It drifted through interstellar space. And now, just for a few weeks, it's passing through our neighborhood. Close enough to see with amateur equipment, and you can see it. That's the amazing part. This isn't locked away behind billion-dollar telescopes. Amateur astronomers with modest equipment can observe an interstellar visitor, can contribute to understanding it, can be part of this moment, because moments like this are rare. We found exactly three interstellar objects. Oumuamua in 2017, Borisov in 2019, and now three I Atlas in 2025. That's three in eight years. We might not find another one for years, maybe decades. And 3i Atlas is the most interesting of the three. Aumuamua was inert, Borisov was predictable, but 3i Atlas? It keeps giving us mysteries. The anti-tail that shouldn't exist, the blade structures, the unusual chemistry, and now this unexpected brightening. Each observation adds a piece to the puzzle, and we need as many pieces as we can get before it leaves. So if you have access to a telescope, look. If you know someone with a telescope, ask them to show you. If there's an astronomy club in your area, go to a star party. See the interstellar visitor while you still can. 3i Atlas is brightening when it should be fading. Astronomers have theories, but theories need data. And the best data is coming in the next few days. December 19th is the closest approach. The critical phase. The moment when we get our clearest view. After that, it's gone. So if you want to see an object from another star system, now is the time. Get to dark skies if you can, point a telescope at Perseus, and look. And subscribe because we'll have updates after December 19th. Whatever the telescopes find, whatever the data reveals, we'll cover it. This is history happening in real time. Don't miss it.